Today's devotional is for Monday, February the 20th. The title of our devotional is, What Do You Call a Divine Appointment? Now, the answer, providence. Our scripture reading is Genesis chapter 40 and chapter 41. Now, a little bit of background. We concluded our study of Genesis 39, leaving uh, Joseph imprisoned for a false charge by Potiphar's wife. Now, remembering that Potiphar was an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, I think that he did not fully trust his wife's word, for indeed, her charge of attempted rape would have been a capital offense. Well, rather than a sentence of death, Joseph found himself in prison. Now, characteristic of his deep faith, he did not allow his circumstances to dictate his outlook. Now we read in chapter 39 and verse 23, the Lord was with him and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. Now Joseph understood what the psalmist observed when he wrote, as for God, his way is perfect. Psalm 18 and verse 30. Now the truths that Joseph learned of the Lord from his father and the dreams and visions he was given in his youth in Genesis 37 continued even in prison, to resonate in Joseph's soul. I invite you to look with me at Genesis chapter 40, and I've uh, subtitled Genesis 40, No Time for Prison Blues. Now, Joseph was charged with the responsibility, we read in chapter 39 and verse 22, of all the prisoners that were in the prison. And so Joseph was serving when two prominent servants of Pharaoh's house, we read about them in chapter 40 and verse 1 and 2. The two were the chief butlers of the butlers and the chief of the bakers. Now, both of these men were sentenced to prison. We're not sure what the nature of their offense was. However, Pharaoh had sentenced them to prison in the providence of God. Joseph then was charged by the captain of the guard to, in verse 4, to serve them. Now, the chief butler, and I would suggest to you he may be like uh, the cupbearer, who would have been one of the most trusted of Pharaoh's servants, tasting his food, drinking uh, wine from his cup to ensure that the Pharaoh would not be poisoned. Well, the chief butler then and the chief baker, we read in verses 5 through 11, had dreamed a dream. Now, these dreams greatly disturbed the two men for what their dreams might foretell. Now, neither time nor space permits an exhaustive study of the dreams. However, we do have Joseph's interpretation, beginning in verse 12 through verse 23 of chapter 40. Now, Joseph's interpretation left the chief butler optimistic that he would be restored to his post in three days. Joseph requested then that the butler remember him and appeal to Pharaoh on his behalf, verses 14 and 15. Well, unfortunately for the interpretation of the chief baker's dreams, it was not so optimistic. For Joseph also interpreted that in three days the baker would be hanged, and I read in verses 18 through 19, on a tree and the birds eat his flesh. Well, certainly, as prophesied, three days passed and the chief butler was restored to serve Pharaoh while the baker was executed according to Joseph's interpretation of his dream. Now, Joseph's desires to be remembered by Pharaoh's butler appeared to end in disappointment. For we read in verse 23 of chapter 40, yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph but forgot him, forgot him. Now, chapter 41, we continue this narrative now. Forgotten by man, but not by God. Now, two years passed from the time that Joseph interpreted the dreams of the butler and the baker until we come to chapter 41 and verse 1. Surely those two years would have demoralized most men. However, there was no hint that it affected Joseph's service. On the contrary, we read in chapter 41 and verse 1 that he was faithful to his task until God was ready to promote him. And then we read in verse uh, 1 of chapter 41 that it was in the providence of God Pharaoh dreamed. 
And the dreams were so disturbing that the king was troubled. And verse 8, And he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh had told them his dream, but there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. Now notice with me 41 and verse 9. Thus the stage is now set for Joseph. When Pharaoh's spirit was troubled and his expert advisors could offer no help, we read that the butler confessed to the king of Egypt, verse 9, I do remember my thoughts this day. Now then giving credibility for his recommendation of Joseph, the butler recalled how his and the baker's dreams were interpreted and came to pass even as Joseph prophesied. Well, anxious to know the interpretation of his dreams, Pharaoh commanded that Joseph would be brought from prison and to his throne, verse 14. Now imagine, what a glorious moment in Joseph's life. So in an instance, at a time providentially appointed by the Lord, Joseph hastened to prepare himself to stand in the presence of the most powerful figure in the world in his day. We read in verse 15, And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I've dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I've heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. Now follow with me this long passage we have before us, Genesis 41, verses 16 through 57. And I'm going to title this section here, From a Slave in Egypt to the Savior of Egypt. Now, deflecting any praise for himself, Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Verse 16. Pharaoh then shared his dream of seven emaciated cows devouring seven healthy cows in verses 17 through 21. And then in verses 22 through 24, seven blighted ears of grain consuming seven healthy ears of grain. Now, this, gra uh, this grain here would probably have been something like wheat or some other crop that was raised in Egypt. Now, finally, in verse 24, we read that the king confessed, I told this unto the magicians, but there was none that could declare it unto me. That is, tell me the interpretation of the dream. Now, <clears throat> God then, in verse 33, sovereignly revealed the significance of Pharaoh's dreams to Joseph, who gave the interpretation to the king and advised him, and I quote, Look out a man discreet and wise, set him over the land of Egypt. Joseph even went further in verses 34 through 37 and suggested the administration necessary to implement storing grain. Now, all this was to save Egypt and her neighbors from starving when the famine persisted for seven years. Well, wonderfully, we read in verse 38 how Pharaoh recognized that Joseph was not only wise, but he was also, and I quote, a man in whom the Spirit of God is. The king then appointed Joseph to serve Egypt second only to himself, verses 33 through 44. Though only 30 years old when he was promoted, verse 46, Joseph was entrusted with the granaries of Egypt as that nation prepared for seven years of famine that would follow seven years of plenty. Genesis 41 closed with a revelation. We read in verse 57, All countries came into Egypt to Joseph for to buy Corn, that corn being another word for grain, because the famine was so sore in all lands. Here's a closing thought. The dreams of Joseph's youth now are on the cusp of being providentially fulfilled by the Lord. Now, I invite you to go to heartofashepherd.com. Today's devotional has four questions that follow as a, as a means of discussion, as a means of personal Bible study. I hope that you would take advantage of those. God bless you. Thank you for joining me for the heart of a shepherd. God bless and bye-bye.